bottom auger, the clean grain auger, goes over and up the elevator to the top. And you'll see on both of these machines, they've got a counterweight up there. <clears throat> and on that counterweight, the clean grain goes into there, fills that up, and you can set that counterweight to any weight that you want to drop. When it hits that, it clicks, drops into the auger, into the wagon. It's just like baling hay. You go over there and you look at the counter on there. If it had 50 clicks on there, you take that times whatever weight you had that set at. That tells you how much grain you ran out of that machine that day. So kind of a neat and nifty item right there. Even back then, the recording uh, technology, that's what they had and that's what they used. They're getting ready to go. Oh, we got a belt coming loose there. You never know when something's going to happen. Kenny's going to get her shut down. They'll get that trimmed off of there, I'm sure. Nothing ever works as planned, as everybody knows, but you do the best you can. Them belts like that, everybody wants to know why don't them belts come off of there. Well, you get them lined up as straight as you can. A lot of them will put the crisscross in it. You can see on the bottom side of that belt, they put belt dressing on that. That helps grip and give the belt contraction on them pulleys so they don't let go. Same way with the machines on the side. A lot of them will have a crisscross. Depends on the direction you want that pulley to go, as if you're going to crisscross it or not. But those belts do their job. They stay right on there at that flat surface, and they'll run all day long that way. A uh, lot of oil, a lot of grease in these bearings. That's the way it is, just like on the steam engines. And one of the operators here always said, a dirty, oily steam engine is a happy steam engine. And that's the way you have to look at it. Uh, a lot of people too, we was talking to Larry earlier, everybody looks at those little decorations on top, those balls spinning around up there. They, well, what's that up there for? Well, those are the governors on these engines. When you put them bundles in there, we like to put them in heads up when they go in, and if you get kind of a slug or you get a, a little bit of a pull on that, you watch them balls spinning around up there. As the engine spins faster, the centrifugal force brings them balls out. That shuts down your steam valve. Then, when it gets under pull and the RPM slow up on that engine, those balls go in because they're not spinning as fast. In turn, that opens up the steam valve, lets more steam into the chest, gives it more power to speed that motor back up and keep them RPMs at a steady rate. Usually, these are set about 250 RPMs. We talked earlier, they slowed one down just a little bit because we didn't want to damage the grain. It's pretty dry wheat this year, and it's just like in a modern day machine. You want to be gentle to the grain as you try to thrash it. You don't want to damage it. So there are adjustments you can make when you put that uh, machine to work thrashing the grain. But it's kind of fun to watch some engines up there. You watch those and all these other engines around the, the ground. That's what those balls are spinning around up there. That is the governor for these machines. Another thing about the steam engine, people talk about how they're working. They got the firebox in there. They try to keep that steady steam going up there. A good dry steam gives you your most efficiency and your most power. You'll see these guys, they'll be putting stuff in the firebox as they use the steam up. When the water level comes down, they'll add a little bit of water with their injectors. They try to find that happy medium. They get the most efficiency out of that machine that they can get. Looks like they got the belt fixed over here on this one. Katie's going to get her going. And they're going to start unloading this one up there. We call them the pitchers up on top of the hay racks. They're pitching the bundles up there. Years ago, they go out and when the wheat would mature, they cut it, put it in the grinder, put it in the bundles, and they would put these shocks up. They put three or four up and put one across the top. That's how they dried the grain. That would sit there for a few days and then they would bring in the thresher machine or they would bring in uh, the crew. They would go out, put the bundles onto the wagon, pull right up to the thresher machine, and then they would thresh the grain out. They'd have a buckboard wagon sitting there for the grain to go into, haul it to town, haul it to the granary, whatever they were going to do with it. A lot of times when the straw goes out, you want to utilize everything on the farm that you could to make your living. So the straw didn't get burnt, they pull the baler up, a stationary baler, then they would bale the straw. The straw would then go into the barn for the bedding for the animals. They'd use it for roughage, mix it with feed. There's a hundred different uses for it. One use you could use is a steam engine we call a straw burner. There's a few straw burners around. Some of them had uh, access holes into the boiler where you could put the straw into the boiler. Now, naturally, you don't get BTUs out of straw that you would get out of coal or, or wood, but they would haul that straw over, put that right back into the, the steam engine as they were running, and then that would continue to produce fire for their steam, and they could do it all right there at one spot. Speaking of uh, the Smith family over here, they got a little 16-horse advance they bring here every once in a while, and we put straw in it as they get the thresh in. And let me tell you, it's a never ending job. You take that straw, you just keep putting it in and putting it in and putting it in, but it's 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 available fuel that they had at the time and it was right there on site. So that worked out 